action! The Ace Attorney series has quite a few things in its lifetime, but who knew that Old Phoenix would be teaming up with a British puzzle solver in a top hat? Yep, Ace Attorney gets a crossover, and it works quite well considering who it's with. Being a big fan of the Ace Attorney series but having never played a latent game prior to this one, I can say that it worked out quite well. I mean, I certainly want to check out more of the Professor Layton series after playing this game. But how about from an Ace Attorney standpoint? Well, let's delve deeper into Level 5 and Capcom's epic crossover. And if it wasn't obvious already, spoilers for pretty much the entire game. Now, normally I wouldn't look into something like this, but I think this is an exception. Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright was first announced in 2010 through a trailer, but there were no plans to release it outside of Japan at the time. Then in July of 2011, Level 5 conducted a Facebook poll to see which of their Japan-only games they should release in English. The crossover won with a total of 6,107 votes out of a total of 13,655. The game was then released on November 29th, 2012 in Japan, but still no word for an international release. After a while, it was then announced that Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright would be released in 2014 worldwide, and for once, being a gamer in either Europe or Australia pays off because you lucky bastards got the game before the US did. Wow, Professor, this is amazing! Mm. The story starts off with a young girl by the name of Esmela Cantabella being chased by... Which is, um, okay then. But then the person she's riding with, later turned out to be Carmine Accidenti, one of the professor's students, crashes his car, but Espella escapes with a letter from Carmine that says he knows who she is. So Espella finds the professor and Luke and talks to them about what's happening to her, but they find it hard to believe, and rightfully so. I mean, some person comes knocking at your door and says, I'm being chased by witches! You'd probably think there was some sort of crazy moron. There's some sort of witch chasing me! Do you think you could assist in warding them off? Professor, there's another meth head knocking at the door. Tell them to screw off, Luke. They are interrupting my tea time in puzzles. So Luke lets a witch in by accident, and then him and the professor lead Espella to safety and fends the witch off. But then the professor and Luke get sucked into the book Espella was carrying, and we don't see them for a while. And here's where Phoenix Wright comes in. As per usual, you have a pretty simple case where you defend somebody and usually find the real culprit in the process. Though majority of Phoenix's trials have been ones of murder, this one is assault and theft. However, Phoenix was only going to study the court system of London and not defend anyone, but got caught up in it anyways. And the client is... Espella? Um, Espella? Aren't you supposed to, you know, be somewhere else? So you go through the trial through typical ace attorney fare of a couple of witnesses, the last one being the real culprit, and the usual Winston Payne, or in this case the British counterpart of him, Prosecutor Flinch, who mocks Phoenix in court much like Payne does. After Phoenix gets Espella declared not guilty, he, along with my FA, gets sucked into the same book as Luke and the Professor did a little while ago. Then you return to playing as the Professor, where you learn that you've been somehow teleported into a medieval-esque town by the name of Labyrinthia, where the people are governed by a storyteller, where apparently what he writes becomes the truth. The Professor and Luke then find Espella, who introduces them to Phoenix and Maya, who are... baking... bread? Later on in the night, Phoenix is summoned to court to defend Espella of... being a witch. A witch! A witch! So you enter the witch's court, and then... execution by fire. I already went over the shock of this, so let's just do a shortened version of it. Oh no, she got dropped into a pit of fire, agony and burning, Ah. As per usual, the second case introduces you to a new prosecutor, or in this case, Inquisitor, and this time we get Zacharias Barnum. We'll get to him later. And as always, it's the defend the wrongfully accused client and find the real culprit at the same time. But because this is witch times we're talking about, if someone is defending a witch, you are totally fucked. But Phoenix actually manages to prove his client's innocence in each of the witch trials. The trials consist of Espella being accused of burning two people in the middle of the forest, Maya of all freaking people turning the professor into gold, and Espella casting a giant fire dragon to kill her father. And as the story progresses, you find out the truth behind Labyrinthia and shed light to all its Citizens. In a nutshell, it's a government experiment for people who are tired of their old lives. The story does make a good ton of sense, but the whole can't see pure black thing is kinda eh. And even though it's obvious, they could have explained who hit the chef girl in the first trial of the game. But it works quite nicely despite being pretty bizarre. I still enjoy it. Concern yourselves not with who I am, but rather with what you will now become. <laughs> 
As far as characters go, it's good, I guess. You've got the best ones, them being Professor Layton and Luke Triton, along with Phoenix Wright and Maya Faye. And you've got some cameos from Inspector Chelmy and that little cop guy and the epic Miles Edgeworth, but they're only slight appearances towards the beginning and end, respectively, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's a nice touch. As for original characters, you've got the zany ones, the intense ones, and the bad guy ones. I don't know, the characters are good, but not that much compared to previous installments in both series. Once again, I'm not too familiar with Professor Layton, but I'm sure they're good. Ace Attorney, on the other hand, is another story. The ones introduced would be the judge, the prosecutors, or inquisitors in this case, and the witnesses. The judge, he's not that good. I mean, he has a couple of moments of surprise and it's entertaining, but it's nothing compared to an old man assuming the chief of police plays with fucking puppets. Inquisitor Barnum is a pretty interesting guy, I guess. He's quite popular considering the crowd cheers from constantly, but I don't know. He's not that interesting, but at least he puts a lot of faith into people, and not just immediately wants to put someone to death just because he thinks they might be a witch. High Inquisitor Darkla acts as the third prosecutor present in all other Ace Attorney games, or Super Prosecutor as I like to call them. She's a lot more interesting than Barnum considering her backstory, but she's not up along the lines of Edgeworth, Simon Blackwell, or Gatto. But then you've got the quirky and zany witnesses who always get a laugh out of me just because of how crazy they are. I mean, that old man is just funny. But a mere punch and bug takes the cake for being one of my favorite witnesses ever. Seriously, what is up with old men in the Ace Attorney series? Why are they so fucking hilarious? And then the biggest new characters introduced in this game, the Storyteller and Espella Cantabella. I quite like them, the Storyteller especially. Espella is a girl who's the Storyteller's daughter, but believes that she's the Great Witch Bazella that burned down the town a hundred years ago. Throughout the game, she constantly believes this, and then towards the end, everyone thinks likewise. And the Storyteller is amazing. He writes stories for the town, and they become true. I guess he's their king, or god, or something. But he has quite an interesting backstory. He came up with the town of Labyrinthia to satisfy people with new lives. But really, he did it all for the sake of his daughter, just so he could convince her that she didn't accidentally murder a bunch of people. I think this is where the game tends to fall a bit flat, as it doesn't have strong characters, but the ones that get right that don't already exist are pretty good. Professor! <laughs> Thank you, my boy. Oh boy. Gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Considering that both of these series are visual novels where most of the enjoyability is through its writing, gameplay is something that they shouldn't have too tough of a time with. Now as far as I'm concerned, the latent formula hasn't really changed at all, going from place to place, talking to people, picking up hidden coins, and solving puzzles. I don't really have a problem with this, considering that the puzzles are a fun set of gameplay. Seriously, that puzzle theme is glorious. But something I've always adored with the Ace Attorney series is that they always seem to add some new form of gameplay with each installment. And this game is no exception, as it introduces cross-examining multiple witnesses and then seeing someone have a problem with what another witness says. It's really nice, and I hear that it's going to be brought back in Daigyaku to the Saiban. Also, any hint coins you find as Professor Layton can be used during trials to help you out if you're a bit confused, so that's pretty nice. Overall, Layton doesn't do much, but doesn't need to, really, and Ace Attorney delivers quite nicely. So yeah, this was a pretty good game. However, in terms of Ace Attorney standards, it's one of, if not the weakest game in the franchise. I mean, if you're interested in getting into one franchise and have played the other series before, like myself, then go ahead and play it. Personally, I want to play more latent games after this now if they're just as good, if not better, than the crossover. Or even dare I say that if you somehow would be interested in getting into both franchises, then play this, and it will only get better. With this pretty good story and amazing gameplay, along with mostly good soundtrack, this game delivers pretty well. But the mostly not that great characters brings it down some, along with some of the voice acting coming out of nowhere, but not being too much of a hindrance. Overall, I'm giving the game a 7.8 out of 10. Too much Layton! No, seriously, 7.8 out of 10 is what I'm giving it. Fits well, eh? Thank you very much for watching my review of this amazing crossover. This is my first ever attempt at something like this in fact, so letting me know how I did would be nice. Ace Attorney Month shall continue with another first video I'm attempting, and two other countdowns. If you enjoyed the video, then I'd most certainly appreciate a like, and if you enjoyed it so much that you want to see more of my content, consider giving me that old subscription if you haven't already. As always, have a grand day and go give an objection to someone.